Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we're here at the Tri-C Tommy LaPuma Center for Creative Arts, and we're here with Tommy LaPuma. Thanks for talking with us. Great to be here. Thank you very much. It is great to have you here, you know. It is such an honor, and it's nice to see you now, not just when we dedicate the building, but as you promised then, because we spoke at the time, you said, I'm going to come back, I'm going to teach some classes to the kids. So talk about what you're doing here tomorrow. you got a whole session going on tomorrow. Uh, actually, even today, we're doing, uh, I, I brought uh, Bruce Botnick in. Uh, Bruce uh, is uh, b both producer and engineer. He, he was engineered and then also produced The Doors, and he worked with MC5, and he's worked with everybody, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and, and on, the, the list goes on. So uh, I brought Bruce in, and he's, uh, he's giving uh, right now a good class on, uh, on engineering, mixing. And uh, uh, tomorrow uh, we're going to actually do a, a recording session with the students where we're going to record something that they're, they're performing and singing and uh, giving them a sense as to what you know, it's like when you're actually doing a date and recording it and what you go through uh, in the process. And then in the evening, we're doing a uh, Q&A, and uh, before that, just basically having a moderator. Uh, Tommy Wiggins is going to uh, moderate and ask us questions about uh, things that we've done, you know, in the past and so forth. And you've done some great sessions. You, uh, congratulations on the Paul McCartney thing. That, that worked out really well. Kisses on the bottom. It sure did, yeah. Just uh, I actually I I didn't think we had a chance. I, I was I really thought it was going to be since it was Michael Bublé and Carol King. I had a sense that maybe Michael being as hot as he is right now was going to get it. But uh, you know, our good fortune. So you're racking up the Grammy awards now, even at this stage in your career. That's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. I, uh, Quite frankly, I thought at this point in my life I was going to be uh, just watching uh, reruns of uh, Seinfeld. Huh? <laughs> you're doing anything but. You're going to be back again at the Jazz Fest, yes. and you're going to be leading some discussions. You've got some great friends of yours again coming in. So talk about what you're going to be doing here. Well, uh, Michael Feinstein is, is actually appearing on the 27th, I believe it is, of April. Uh, and uh, that afternoon we're doing a, uh, a discussion on uh, the Gershwins. And, uh, and all of the, you know, uh, Michael worked with the Gershwins. Well, actually worked with uh, Ira Gershwin for, for some time. Yeah, he sort of studied. I mean, he's a real historian, and he collects, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to talk about the Gershwins, and then there'll be a Q&A, uh, obviously, along with that. And uh, then the following evening, uh, uh, Natalie Cole is uh, performing, and I'm going to introduce her and, and talk about, you know, our, uh, our experiences together. So it should be great. Yeah, you've got quite an interesting background in both jazz, people like Diana Krall, you're a producer now, and, and as well, and going all the way back, I mean, Verve and, uh, and all these great labels that you started, GRP, um, right? And, and you, also the R&B. I mean, you, you really have both. Well, I did, I've done, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because I really get sort of pegged as being the jazz quote-unquote uh, guy, but I'm more, uh, I, I'm, I, I love all kinds of music, you know, and... Uh, uh, I did. In fact, one of the things we're going to talk about uh, tomorrow is, um, uh, because Bruce worked on this with me, is uh, I did an album back in the 70s with uh, Dave Mason, uh, who was one of the main guys with Traffic. And um, we did this album called Alone Together. So we're going to talk about that experience and how I brought Leon Russell into the situation uh, with when, when we recorded it. and. So it should be uh, it should be very interesting, yeah. Did that all come out of your time here in Cleveland? Because you started here. Uh, that whole R and B thing was something you fell in love with when you were a kid here. Yeah, yeah. I was, I, was, uh, I had this illness as a kid, and I was laid up in bed, and I, uh, I was lucky enough to uh, find WJMO on the on, on the uh, on the band, and that was it. I never took it off. That that was uh, uh, that was my favorite station, and I'd learned. Every, everyone from, you know, Big Maybell and Charles Brown and Nat Cole and, I mean, well, the coasters, uh, it was, the coasters came a little later, but... Uh, and you worked with the OJs here in Cleveland, right? It was one of your first, uh, yeah, your first I hits. I worked with them in Cleveland. I, I had uh, moved out to L.A. by that time, and uh, the record company I was working with, Imperial, had, I'm sorry, Liberty, had bought Imperial Records, and it turns out that they were on Imperial, the, the OJs were on Imperial. Yeah. And it was actually the first record uh, that I produced. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, you had to go to L.A. to work with the Cleveland yeah. band, right? <laughs> right. I was actually trying to reach Walter. Well, we've, we've been missing one another. Uh, uh, but uh, Walter, I guess, does, lives here and lives in Vegas, both. And I believe Eddie still lives here. Yeah. yeah. You got a history with a lot of artists. You, you helped produce Randy Newman's demos, right? When he was just getting started. Yeah, yeah I met Randy. It was his last year in college at UCLA, and uh, he and Lenny Warnker, who ended up be, becoming president at Warner's. Lenny and Randy were very close friends, and Lenny's father owned Liberty Records, which is where I was working as a promotion man. So we met very early on and became very close friends. And and then when I became a music publisher, song plugger. Randy uh, uh, went with the publishing company I was with, and I ended up getting him actually his first record uh, by uh, Jerry Butler called I Don't Want to Hear It Anymore. I don't know if you know that song, but and, uh, but we've been very good friends, and he's now getting uh, inducted uh, on, on the 18th yeah, of uh, next month. He'll be inducted in the Hall of Fame here, and I'm sure you'll, <laughs> you'll probably be with him there yeah. and enjoying that. I will be there with him, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's great to have you back here and teaching the kids, and it'll be great to see you once again in just a couple months uh, next month. <laughs> I, hope so. I, hope, I, I hope we see you then. I, I, I take it you're going to be uh, at the affair? Yeah. We, believe me, the, those days that it's, what is it, 10 days, 12 days straight, it's a, it's a fabulous time here in Cleveland. We're really looking forward to it. It's great having you here. Thank you so much. Thanks for talking. Thanks for taking a few moments. Thank you. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in cool Cleveland.